Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. A murder suspect on the run leads Detroit police on a chase throughout the east side and then makes a detour to Greektown. Thanks for being with us for the news at 11. That chase went from the east side to I-75 with a state police helicopter following his every move before he drove into the Greektown Hotel parking garage. The garage was quickly surrounded by dozens of officers. Mara McDonald live at the scene tonight. Uh, do they have him in custody now, Mara? Devin, they do have him in custody, and Detroit police telling us he is a suspect in multiple shootings as well as a homicide. Take a look. Detroit Police Major Crime Squad swarming the Greektown Hotel's parking garage where the suspect made it up to the seventh floor thinking he was going to outrun the Detroit Police and Michigan State Police's helicopter, which had been tracking him for more than 20 minutes. Not a bad place to stop when you're a bad guy because the helicopter can't see you, but really bad place because of all the video that's inside of there. DPD converging on the hotel parking garage and locked it down, watching the suspect as he asked two good Samaritans for a ride. He actually uh, asked for a ride from some people not connected, and once we watched the video, we walked right to him and got him out of the car arresting without incident. DPD whisking him away tonight as he hid from our cameras. Back here live, police telling us no injuries of any sort in this case tonight, which is pretty amazing when you consider how fast this guy was driving all over the east side. And a point, DPD cut off their their squad pursuit instead, letting MSP's chopper track him. We're live in Greektown tonight. I'm Mara McDonald, Man. Local 4. Yeah, what a night. All right, Mara. Meanwhile, a Hamtramck man is facing charges tonight after Detroit police say he groped a 13-year-old girl at the Sunoco station on Seven Mile on the city's east side. This was last Sunday. The man was a clerk there and was arrested that evening. Jason Colthorpe live tonight. And you talked to that girl's mother, Jason. I did, Kim, and it's our policy not to identify victims of sexual assault, so you're not going to see her. You'll only hear her voice. And believe me, it was a lot louder last Sunday when she and her husband went and confronted this clerk after they were told what happened. It was supposed to be a normal trip Sunday to the gas station for the 13 year old girl and her brother to get snacks. But according to a Detroit police report filed by the girl's mother, one of the clerks interrupted that when he came around the counter. Grabbed her by her hoodie, pulled her close to him, his genital area, rubbed on her buttocks and on her breast area, he gave her $10, not the tail. The kids went straight home and told their parents, who immediately went back to the store to confront the clerk. We went in, me and my husband, we was furious, frustrated, angry. He said, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And so I continued to curse him out and, and, and told him, no, you're not sorry. Do you like touching on little girls? You're a pedophile. No, I'm going to call the police and I'm not going to leave this gas station until he's walked out of here in handcuffs. Police did arrive and they arrested Faisal Al Halami, 38 of Hamtramck. Faisal Abdel Halami. He was arraigned on two counts of fourth degree CSC in 36th District Court today with the help of an Arabic interpreter. And as for the 13 year old girl, she's heartbroken just as well as her mom is. And she's frightened, very frightened. Are you worried about how this might affect her for the rest of her life? Yes, I am. That's something that will bother a, a, a child mentally. And there was also an unusual problem at the arraignment today. It seems when the prosecutor put the name in for this defendant, she put the wrong name in there, or whoever it was put the wrong name in there from the office. And that led to some confusion. And the, it went so far as the defense attorney asking the judge to drop these charges and have the prosecutor's office refile with the correct name. The judge ended up deciding to set bail at $75,000. Kim? Yeah, well, Jason, and not sure how long the man had worked there, but had anything like this ever happened before? Uh, he has worked there a little while, and those kids, that family, have, have gone there for a while. And they said, as it turns out, last summer, the girl and her friend were there, and it was something similar, but there was no groping. It was kind of like an awkward dancing going on with this mm. clerk that they told. The mother didn't know that until today, and mm. she says she wished her daughter had told her about it then. Then, sure. Kim. Yeah. Okay, Jason, thank you.
Well, tonight, COVID cases appear to be slowing and federal help is coming to boost the state's vaccination effort. The state's seven day average for cases continues to drop. Michigan reporting 4867 new cases today. State also reporting an additional 108 deaths. Now, more than 200 federal workers are being sent to Michigan's mass vaccine sites following a request from Governor Whitmer. The Detroit Public Schools Community District says it is giving employees a $500 bonus and two additional sick days if they get vaccinated. City of Detroit focusing on local vaccination sites for residents. Mayor Duggan says they are soon going to take the vaccine into neighborhoods. I think in the next two or three weeks, we'll be house to house. But that's the next phase. Right now, we need to go to community-based uh, vaccination sites. And today is a model for our next phase of rollout. Meantime, city adding pop-up clinics and expanding hours at some of its walk-in vaccine sites to be open from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. All right, warmer weather is on the way, but we're still in for a chilly night tonight. Let's see if we can warm up here for the weekend. It was a lot colder than this last night, Ben. It was, and we are on the way up, guys, so no looking back to those 20s. Even though tonight is going to be close, uh, we don't have any freeze warnings or advisories out uh, as we head into the overnight hours. But it is still obviously chilly out there. Temperatures in the 40s and 30s as we look out over downtown Detroit. Some of those places have wind chills right now. Uh, Ann Arbor feeling like 23 degrees. So even though we're going to start there right around 32, it's only going to be for a brief period of time. And we bounce pretty quickly with that early sunshine. Temperatures into the 60s by afternoon tomorrow. Let's see if we can get that everywhere in the four zone forecast. Here are your highs, 62 in Romulus, 63 in the city. South zone high temperatures tomorrow will all be in the low 60s. In fact, the coolest number out there, Onstead, right at 60 degrees. All sixes in the front of the temperatures out there in the west zone. And how about this? Even the north zone, you're all going to the 60s for high temperatures tomorrow. So everybody gets to enjoy a Friday uh, after we go into the weekend with some slightly cooler temperatures you can see. Plenty of rain there on Saturday. We'll talk timing on that. A little bit on the front end of Sunday, but mostly dry conditions. And then we will really see a warm up as we get into next week. So, guys, we deserve this after the snow and the cold and the wind chills. Friday looks fantastic. We'll talk more about it coming up. Can't wait. Okay, Ben, thank you. A person working at a vacant Detroit home finds a human skeleton inside the house. The discovery was made at a home on East Hollywood near Seven Mile and I 75. Police tell us someone was inside the home cleaning when they found the skeleton on a couch. They have not identified the remains. Stellantis is investigating a workplace accident where a worker was killed. This happened Wednesday at the stamping plant in Sterling Heights. According to the Free Press, the worker was killed after a machine fell on the worker, crushing him. He was taken to the hospital where he died from his injuries. New video shows the moments before shots are fired into a crowd on Detroit's west side. Police are calling these two men persons of interest. They were spotted armed with guns on Northfield near Tyerman back on April 9th, shortly before someone opened fire. One woman was hurt and rushed to the hospital. She is expected to be OK. Police are also searching for a third suspect seen here. I know it's hard to see, but take a good look there. If you have any information, contact Detroit police. Still ahead, a little boy is nearly crushed by a 100 pound box that had just been delivered to his home. Ah, help! The heroic actions of the delivery driver that quickly followed coming up. A decision looming on resuming use of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Dr. Frank McGeorge joins us with the factors that will determine tomorrow's ruling. That's why. But first, a chase involving a man wanted for shooting five people ends in the middle of a Detroit neighborhood. That's next.